All right, we uh, got our storm back all laid out here. Um, and with your plans, you're gonna get a table of offsets, which is probably gonna be part of a bigger sheet. Right? And on that, it's going to have uh, the distance between the forms. So, you know, I know from this that it wants my jig for my transom to come in three and a half inches. So I drew a line three and a half inches in, and then the next thing is uh, 16 and a half inches for my next one, and then um, what does it go up to 34 and a half, and it just goes on and on and on. It tells me where the measurements are for every single form going down. Um, the only form that's even remotely tricky is going to be the transom. Now, the transom has a jig that's really well laid out inside the plans. So what I did is to mount it to the jig, I know that this is a 10 inch piece because that's what the plans told me to do. So I took and extended the center line on this side and then I did five inches to either side, which gives me a line over here and then a line over here that I can match up. And then, <coughs> excuse me, on the other side, I have a line that I put five inches on either side of that center that I can line up here and here. And then I just simply put a screw from here to here to hold it down to the jig. So what that does for me, now I'm not worried about these screws here because I know that I'm going to be laminating over the top of this either a nice piece of mahogany or a nice piece of ash or white oak and then bright working that. So not worried about the little screw holes. Uh, yeah, this should do. And on the other side, put a little wood putty, not wood putty, but uh, wood flour and epoxy in there. Nobody will ever see a thing. And it'll be beautiful. So then this, uh, go ahead and mount right here. So I've got lines now going perpendicular to my center line all the way down where my forms are going to be. All right, I got all my little soldiers lined up here. So now it's just a matter of screwing them down. Now, what you want to do is take it. I'm going to, uh, let me see, I'm going to grab form eight, which is my next form. And you want to line it right up here so that the form is square with the line going across the strong back and the center line is right down on the center line. Now, because I put a center line going all the way down this block, I have a center line here and a center line here. And in theory, and in reality, if you did it right, when you line those two center lines up, it should be perfectly square right along the front here as well because you've got a 90 degree angle and this one is. All right, so now I'm simply gonna take um, two and a half inch deck screws and I'm gonna screw one side, uh, one screw on each side all the way down. And I'm, on this one here, it's a little bit different uh, because it's hard to get at and you wanna make sure that you're gonna be able to get it off when you need to get it off. So on this one here, what I'm going to do is put a screw in on each side kind of like a toenail thing. And then I'm going to put a couple of screws in the back here and that'll hold it just plenty. Because after all these are on, then we got a couple of things we need to do. First, uh, we're going to need to line them all up. And I got a little trick with a piece of string that we do and we eyeball down it. And then we take shims and go to either side of the forms and we rock them back and forth until those center lines are just lined up right down the strong bag. This one's gonna be a little bit tricky because the boat peels up a little bit. So, you know, we're gonna either have to extend the forms up with a little stick or something so that we can see the center line real clear, or, you know, maybe you don't have these and you won't have that problem. Um, so, and then after that, we need to shape a couple of things. Uh, shape three things, actually. We need to shape this form so that when the strips come in, they lay flat, um, and we're gonna go through that. We need to shape the stem, same thing, as, this, as the uh, strips come in, they need to lay flat on the stem. And then we're gonna shape the, um, the skeg bedding here. So that when the strips hit that, they're flat. So right now, focus on what we need to do, and what we need to do right now is mount the forms all the way down. So I'm gonna get that done.
right, so there you go. Uh, got the forms mounted. Kind of an excited time because you can start to see what this boat's going to look like. I still got to put the stem form on the front, uh, but our inner and outer stem is still drying. So it's getting late in the afternoon. We got some afternoon sun coming in here. Time to call it a day. Uh, and then we'll come back tomorrow. We'll start mounting that stem form and lining up these forms. And um, maybe, maybe if we do everything right, we'll be throwing on the first strips by tomorrow afternoon. All right. Now this next step, surprisingly enough, is one of the ones I get the most questions on. And when we do these uh, DVDs, we, we always explain this, but um, somehow it seems to escape. And it's really pretty simple. So this time, I'm not even gonna explain this step, I'm gonna explain why, and maybe that'll help people understand. Uh, when you get your forms, or your patterns from us, um, you're gonna see uh, probably a projected share line. You might, you might not. Um, but the pattern, if I did my job right, and you did your job right in cutting them out, um, the two of them are actually going to be the same height. So this stem form will be exactly the same height as this form here, because that's where the curve comes in, right? Well, you're going to be adding this inner stem. Uh, and depending on how accurate you are, whether or not you've got a kit, or whether you're cutting it yourself, this stem is going to be approximately a half inch thick. Well, in order for this stem to come up here and attach to here, you need to shave the amount of this stem off of here. And the reason for that is because, you know, we're going to put this on and then we're going to shape it. And when you're stripping this hull down, you always strip past the end of the inner stem. And then when you're putting your outer stem on, your outer stem never comes as far as the inner stem because that'll create a weak spot here. All right, so um, the first thing I did was I measured this, and it's just a hair over a half an inch. So what I did is I, on the table saw, I took just a hair over a half an inch off the bottom of the thing, and what it does is it lowers the entire stem form down. So you can see now, when I put this up against it, and I push the two of them together, it's a half inch low, and that's perfect because when I put that inner stem on, it's going to be exactly the same height as this. So when I start to shape it all down, it'll flow right into the first form just perfect. Okay, so I hope that cleared it up. Um, if not, by all means, shoot me an email if you get confused or, or give me a call, and we'll try to get that answered for you. All right, so then the next thing I need to do is I need to get this mounted to this and the two of them tied together so that I can mount the inner stem and then start to straighten the forms up all the way around. So what I've done here, let's take a close look down here. What I've done is I've marked uh, three eighths of an inch on either side of center, which you can see gives me a three quarter inch kind of a runway going the length of the end of the strong back up to this form and completely centered. Well, this is the three quarter inch piece of wood here for the stem form. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this to that right down the center. All right, so that's a good way to keep everything aligned. You've got to start by aligning these first two forms and then from there just go all the way down. All right, so um, the easiest and simplest way I, have, I know of how to do this is um, I use hot glue and blocks to get myself situated. So I'm going to place this form right on the line. If you do it right, you should barely see that line on either side of the form, which I do. All right, and I have this hot glue gun, and I'm going to take hot glue, put it on some blocks, and attach it right to the forms. So I'll put a little dab right here, right on the strong back, and I'll put a little bit here on this block. Got to work kind of quick here, and then I'll just snug it right up there. Don't push too hard because you don't have anything holding the other side yet. All right, so that gives me one there. Now I'm going to do the same thing up here on the side. So you're going to hold the form so it's pretty much dead center and you can see your center mark up top here so it'll make it easier for you. So I'm going to hold that and then I'm going to put a little glue there and put a little glue there and I'm going to put the two together. All the time making sure you don't shift them apart. All right, so that's going to hold it enough. I'm going to hold that for about 20, 30 seconds. Then I'm going to go to the other side and do the same thing. All right. 
is one. And now up the side, I'm gonna go right about here and right about here. And press it in. All right, so this is a real handy, easy way to attach it. Uh, and the reason I use the hot glue like this is because when it's time to take it out and knock all the forms apart, I just take a hammer and start tapping at it and I don't have to figure out a way to get my hand in there with a screw gun or a, or a hammer to try to pull nails out, right? So this is uh, just a couple easy taps of the hammer and it all comes apart and that's a beautiful thing, but it's definitely strong enough to hold it while we're doing our stripping job. Okay, so one more word. Uh, we'll be using hot glue throughout the entire project here for a number of different things probably. Um, one quick word about the hot glue. Do not use carpenters glue sticks. Uh, they are tenacious, they are surprisingly strong, um, and if you get them attached to the cedar, it'll rip the cedar before it rips the glue. So this is just your standard craft hot glue. This kind of stuff that you get at Michael's or a craft store. All right, and that's all you need to use for this and, and it'll be fine. You can also get it at Home Depot or any of the big box stores, they have it. Just don't get that super duper glue for woodworkers because you're gonna be surprised at just how strong that is. All right, now uh, the next step here to move on to get this mounted is I need to get it flush cut with the end here so that when this comes in, it backs right in. And, and that is just going to be a simple matter of me putting it here, kind of make a rough mark with a pencil, giving it a cut and it should be fine. Just make sure that when you're holding it, it bends, bends around nice and flat and we'll be uh, using clamps to hold this on while we're getting some of our stripping done. So I'm just going to take a pencil, make a little mark, cut it, and I'm going to come back here and mount it again. All right, now I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, throw a few clamps to hold this in place for what we need to do next. And you know, you don't need to clamp it in every hole. You just need to clamp it to the point where, uh, you know, the thing is held steady for you. Probably gonna take me maybe three clamps and a screw at the bottom. We'll get to that screw in just a second. All you're really trying to do is making sure that it stays true to the shape of the form as you start your work. Now if you look down here at the bottom, you're going to see that big speech I went through about making sure that your strong back is a little bit shorter than your bow. Well, you know, I did a quick mismeasurement here, and I actually came up dead spank even to the end here. I don't know how I did it, but it's fine. As long as my stem can wrap around that, I'm a happy guy. Um, yours is probably going to be a couple inches shorter than this. Uh, the, one, the big, big reason why I like to do this is uh, two. One, I like to make sure that the strip's not going to hit anything on the way down. And second, I like to put a screw in right here that goes right into the strong back. Um, what that does is it alleviates having any clamps down here while I'm starting to get my work done on the first few stamps, uh, strips. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill and countersink and then slip a screw right through the end here and right into the strong back. And that'll make this nice and secure so that I can go ahead and... Uh, Start to get ready to shape it. All right, what I have in my hands now is just a simple carpenter square. I've got it set for a quarter inch here. And the reason is I'm, I'm about to divide this stem into three sections of a quarter, quarter, quarter. It's a three quarter inch thick. Uh, what that does is it gives me lines that I can watch as I'm shaping it. I don't want to go past that because I'm going to want a flat spot all the way down. It's a quarter inch thick. All right, so I'm going to simply take this and with a nice sharp pencil, I'm going to scribe my way down. And then I'm going to flip to the other side and I'm going to do the same thing. Try to do as neat a job as you can here because it'll make it a lot easier giving you a guide as you're doing your shaping. All right, so I'm going to, <coughs> excuse me, shift these C-clamps around so I can get to the rest of the boat here.
All right, so I got a string tied off to that little nail. And right now, just trying to rough out here. You know, one of the problems that we're gonna have with a boat of this caliber is the transom is a few inches down, about six inches down from the rest of the boat. So the easiest way for me to do this is again, grab a little bit of hot glue and put a little extension on this thing, driving that string up. Because if I lie it right down here in the middle, uh, it's going to start touching the forms and then you got to start doubting the accuracy of what you're doing. So what I'm about to do is take a little piece of wood with a hot, with a hot glue and I'm going to extend this up to right about here. Okay. All right, so this isn't uh, a mission critical kind of thing. I'm just going to put a little line of glue going down the side there. Take my stick and I'm going to line it up with the side of the center line that's there. And what that does, I'm going to hold it so it dries. So what that does, so now I can take the string, wrap it around this edge here, and that'll be the same as having it right on the center line. It's a beautiful thing. All right, so before I attach that string, I'm going to give this a couple minutes to set and dry. All right, this next step is fairly simple too, um, but you'd be surprised how many people just get a little bit stumped by this, and probably because you don't think about these kinds of things every day. Um, all we're going to do now is we're going to take these nice, neat black lines, and we're going to line them up with the string going all the way down. So if you put your eyeball on the end there and you look down, you got a white string, and in theory, all the black lines should just disappear. They should all melt underneath that string. And the way we're going to do that, uh, if you remember, when we put these forms down, we put one screw in on either side. So if we have to rock it left or rock it right, we're going to loosen up the appropriate screw, slide a shim, you can get these, just door shims, you can get these at any hardware store, slide a shim underneath until it rocks into place, screw it back down. Now, only really one rule, and that's the stem form and the transom, they don't move. They stay exactly where they are. And, and the thing that people have a hard time wrapping their head around is, well, what if you're doing the whole boat at a tilt? It doesn't really matter. You can do the whole belt, boat at a 90 degree angle, stick it up on the wall and still strip it. And what you're trying to do is get every form in place with relation to the next form. Whether it's in place with the axis of the earth or the pole of the moon or, or the floor that you're sitting on, it doesn't really matter. You're just trying to get every one of them in line with the one that's next to it. So if they're all off by five degrees, which would be crazy because you would, you'd be you know, sliding sideways on your floor. Um, but let's say they were all off by five degrees. It doesn't matter because basically you'd be building the whole boat sideways. But when you were done and you pulled it off the forms, it would be perfect. All right. So the concept here is to just get one form right after the other, all in line, all the way down. So uh, this is about a half hour project or so. I'm not going to lie to you. This is definitely easier with two people. Uh, and I'm going to do it with two people. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Skycam. And we're going to put the camera up there, um, play a little bit of music. And we're going to start rocking some forms back and forth. And we're going to get all this lined up. So all of our forms are lined up and we got about four more things left to do before we start putting on our straps. Uh, the first and probably the trickiest is going to be shaping this stem. We want to make sure that as the strips come along the boat and they hit the stem, they lie down nice and flat. We don't want any gaps there. We want to be flat wood to flat wood. And I could really impress you and take out my drawer knives and all my other little tools right now. Um, I'd be lying to you because as soon as we turn the camera off, I'd be hitting the power tools. 
And so I might as well just show you that. Um, I don't want to disappoint you with the quality of work here, but what I do is I use a belt sander to get me 95% of the way there. And uh, it's going to take me probably less than seven minutes to go from here to here and get the rough shape. Now the key is, is when you're holding the sander, you don't want to hold it uh, perpendicular to the form because you'll just rattle that form right off the boat. You want to roll it up and down. And what I've done is I've taken a black marker and I've marked the inside all the way down here. The reason I did that is because you never, ever, ever want to touch that. You don't want to go past that point. That's the magic point where you're beveling this way and by the time you reach the inside, you're done. You don't want to take anything off that because the inside is the actual shape of your stem. Uh, excuse me, of your transom. All right. So uh, I'm going to take the belt sander and you can see that up top here, I have already beveled the top of this thing and what I did uh, for that is I got this really simple tool I find really works well. I take 60 grit sandpaper over a quarter by three quarter inch piece of hardwood. That glue, spray glue that we put the patterns down on, spray a little bit on the wood, lay it down and then cut the sandpaper and it basically it makes a little rasp and as this starts to go down I pull it off and I do it again. So I will start this using a regular rasp and I'll get it all roughed out and then I will just take this sandpaper and finish it off. It gives me a nice even edge. It works out really nice. And you can see that uh, it makes it dead on. All right, so we're not going to worry about this right now. I'm going to put that forward. I'm going to take this belt sander and I'm going to get this roughed out. So now it's all about seeing if we did a good job, right? And chances are we're just gonna have to keep coming back to this till we get it right. But what I have here is just a uh, five foot, six foot piece of strip I'm using as a test. And I'm gonna wrap it around from form to form to form here. And I'm gonna lie it flat on the transom. And I'm gonna roll it up and I'm gonna see where I got it and where I missed it. And you can see by taking a look at this, that you know, I've got a small gap on the back end of this one, so the angle is a little bit too steep. I'm gonna have to take a little bit of that off. But as I come up right here, it's you know just about perfect here. And as I come up here, I got a little bit gap here in the forward, so I'm gonna have to make this angle a little bit steeper. All right, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna keep rolling this thing up and down. Um, you can see right here, boy, it's just perfect. I'm gonna keep rolling this thing up and down on both sides. I'm gonna use sandpaper now on a flat stick and I'm gonna get this just perfect. Well, the stem is basically the same type of thing that we just did on the transom. Uh, we want the strips that come around from the front of the boat to land nice and flat here. And obviously right now we got a peak, so they're not going to lie flat anywhere. That's why we divided this. Now that black line that I drew back there is the don't go beyond this point line uh, is basically the lines that we drew on this, right? We divided this into three. So the first third is what I'm actually shaping to go back and meet that first form. The only uh, difference is, you know, we got this screwed down here so it's nice and secured. We got this clamp here so it's nice and secured. And so all I'm going to do is about the first 8 to 10 inches or so. And then as we strip that and that dries, then we can take this clamp off, move it way up here, do a little bit more, do a little bit more until we get up close to the ends. Uh, so we're going to do this in probably like a three or four step process over the next few days. Right now I'm just worried about the first 8 to 10 inches. So I'm going to grab uh, again, uh, I'm going to grab my uh, belt sander and I'm going to rough it out. Now the belt sander, you should just about be able to get it perfect. Uh, what you're going to do there is essentially just take the sander and you're going to aim it right at that first form. 
and just make sure you don't go over this line. If you take off some of this, so be it, don't worry about it. We're gonna put some blue tape there to keep glue off it anyway. So all you're gonna do right now is you're gonna sand it so at this angle goes to that form and the strips are gonna lie nice and flat. All right, here we go. Well, that's pretty close, but you can see as I go up here, I gotta bend the strip just a little bit to make that, which means my cut's not quite steep enough, my angle. So again, I'm done going up to this line, so all I'm talking about now is making this angle a little bit steeper and not cutting any deeper into this thing. Uh, pretty easy thing to do, a couple of passes uh, ought to take care of it. You can see right up here, it's perfect. So I'm gonna start here and work my way down, just steepen that angle just a little bit. So the last couple of things that we need to do to get ready to put our first strips on um, is protect all the areas that might get glue on them. So uh, we've got blue tape, painter's tape, all the way around these forms, on every form. I still haven't uh, done the stem yet where we sanded that down, so you gotta take blue tape and go up around the sides of that too, or else you might be in for a little surprise when you're gonna pull your uh, stem form out of your boat. So make sure that you go ahead and put some blue tape in there. These strips that you see stapled here are just, um, you know, these are strips that didn't make the cut for customers. So we got a whole a batch of them over there for one reason or another. And what we do is we put a couple on either side to stiffen these up. And you can see, you know, no more wobble to them. The best way to do that is we put a, uh, a uh, right angle right here and we make sure that they're all standing exactly upright with respect to the strong back. And then um, you have to do it a couple times, right? You have to go down and do it on one side and then you take the right angle and you do the same thing again. Um, the square, you do the same thing again because as you pull one side in and the other side in, it's gonna pull it up tight. And so as you get these strips on both sides, now they're all standing up straight. More importantly, they're all the right spacing apart. The way that you check to make sure that they're not twisted on the strong back is real simple. Your, from your table of offsets, you know how far it is from one to the other, so you simply measure across. Now from the inside of this one to the inside of this one, I've got 28 inches, and that's exactly what it's supposed to be. If I go to the other side and measure, it should be 28 inches. If it's not on both sides, then it's twisted. So you have to undo the staples, untwist it, and put it back to where it ought to be. Well, uh, for you, it's gonna be just a couple of seconds before we start stripping this. For me, it's gonna be another day. Because I'm done, we're gonna wrap up the shop for the night, and we're gonna come back tomorrow, start with our shear strips, and we ought to be able to get at least 20, 25, 30 strips on this thing tomorrow. All right, it's looking good.